Assalamualaikum and hello to our lecturer and my fellow classmate. Today, we want to present our assignment to strategic management, which is we choose Air Asia. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Nur Izzatul Zayani Maulah Sabi'i and that's my group member, which are Ashafira Binti Sahari, Azza Binti Azwan Shah, Nur Rabiatul Adawiyah Binti Abdullah, Maizatul Irna Binti Ismail, Nur Tasha Diana Binti Ibrahim, Muhammad Amirul, Rizal bin Kamil and last is Nur Mashwari binti Narawi. So I will present a little about history of Asia, vision and mission and current strategy used by Asia. First, Asia was established in 1993 and began their operation on 18 November 1996. Asia effectively put its brand in the mind of customer with the strong and consistent slogan, Now everyone can fly and Asia is also known for its low fares. The vision of uh, Asia is to be the largest low-cost airline in Asia and serving the 3 billion people who are currently underserved with poor uh, connectivity and high fares. The mission of Asia is to be the best company to work for whereby employee are treated as part of a big family. Second mission is to create a globally recognized Asian brand. Third is to attend the lowest cost so that everyone can fly with Asia. And the last one is to maintain their highest quality product, embracing technology and reduce cost and enhance service level. As we know, Asia offers the lowest price to, uh, to customer. This is the strategy used by Asia to attract more customers to use their online service. Besides, safety also one of the strategy used by Asia. Safety is very important because they want to make sure their customer uh, and also their employee are always safe and comfortable. Strength and weakness are a tried and true management framework that allows a company like AirAsia to evaluate its business and performance to rivals. The first strength of AirAsia is AirAsia has a good management team. They have a highly cooperative and powerful management team that has a good relationship with the government and airline business leader. This is because AirAsia's executive management team is made up of a diverse range of industry executive and former senior government official. Uh, the second strain is they have a low cost airline leader. Together with its claim that now everyone can fly, AirAsia offers its client the lowest fares on airline service. The workforce is essential, flexible, and high skill, and it has the potential to push AirAsia to the top of Asia's low-cost airline industry. The next is weakness. The first weakness is customer have a lot of issue with the Asia service. Complaints have included airline delays, being charged for several items, and being unable to reschedule flight or receive a refund if clients were unable to make it. Uh, last but not least is the maintenance for the Air Asia facility is poor. Expense of aircraft is aircraft maintenance is rising. They don't have a uh, facility for maintenance, repair, and overhaul the aircraft. As you know, AirAsia is the one of the famous airplane companies in Malaysia which provide a lower cost ticket flight to everyone. By providing air travel at a lower price, it was one of their strategies to gain more benefits. It is for them to make sure that their company has better future plans in the long term, especially in their financial. For the past three months ended on 31 March 2021, Air Asia revenues decreased 90% to 205.1 million, net loss decreased 5% to 767.4 million, revenues reflect revenue passengers total decrease of 90% to 97.7k, load factor total negative percent decrease of 13% to 67%, lower net loss reflect fair value gain in loss on derivative increase from 270.1 million to 22.4 million staff cost decrease of 62 percent to 163 million for the expenses the gain and loss benefits are especially depending on the economic fluctuation of the country for example 
For over a year, our country has been facing a virus disaster where the government needs to stop many companies from continuing their operation for a while, including the aircraft service. There are a lot of AirAsia core competencies, including the synergy between their management and the employee. The management strongly supports and motivates their employees to work so that they have high productivity and creativity where there is no such thing in other aircraft companies. Other than that, AirAsia has productive and skillful employees where the employees create tips in order to help in procedures to save time and costs such as the one type concept. AirAsia utilizes a single aircraft type which reduces maintenance costs when compared to other low cost carriers. AirAsia also has a strong brand and marketing approach to get a lot of customers to use their services yet difficult to imitate by others. Last but not least, the outstanding leadership by the AirAsia management makes them now a recognized Asian brand through its operational basis. Through the diversity of its 7,500 strong staff and through its commitment to the region, with such a great achievement, it is no surprise that Air Asia has been named the world's best low-cost airline 2010 by Skytrax, the expert research advisor to the air transport. Now I will continue with the topic about management capabilities of Air Asia, organizational structure and corporate culture. First of all, we will discuss about the management capabilities of Air Asia. In Air Asia, they provide a really good service and teamwork, making simple practices to service and giving help to customers in need. Air Asia has started a revolution in air travel with its business motto of now everyone can fly, with more and more individuals throughout the region choosing Air Asia as their preferred mode of transportation. For organizational structure part, organizational structure means when when the culture is used only in some organization. From these cases, we identified that AirAsia has established the geographical factors. AirAsia Berhad is led by a pragmatic revolutionary visionary. The control elegance of Tony Fernandez is transformative control. Last but not least, for corporate culture part, AirAsia mainly serviced domestic roads at the time and had the classic legacy airline business strategy with 200 workers. Fernandez then resolved to take action, transforming the company into a flat car part culture that prioritized employee accessibility and open communication. He also has his own personal brand in which, his, which he purposely dresses down or look worse than his worker in order to maintain a flat atmosphere and open lines of communication with his employees. So as a conclusion, Asia Berhad actually have both of organizational structure and corporate culture. This company become more success because of the strong leadership skill of their CEO. I will present about business and corporate level strategy of Air Asia. For the cost leadership strategy that adopted by Air Asia, they are have a target market such as domestic flight, short haul and regional flights and long haul regional services. Apart from pricing competition, Air Asia offer value added vendors like as ticketless travel and free seating policy. For example, they offer an internet check in service that let customers to print their own boarding cards. They charge extra fee for early boarding and seat selection. They let customers to pre book their check bags and meals and they sell food and beverage on board the aircraft. For the corporate level strategy, by obtaining the corporate level strategy, it can increase the market share of the company business. In this current situation, which is COVID-19 pandemic, the corporate level strategy of Air Asia has changed drastically from budget air airline to digital travel and lifestyle platform. The arrival of COVID-19 as well as the resulting flight cancellation gave the corporation with an opportunity to fast track the digital transformation strategy. This strategy will allow them to focus on and fast track the digital transformation by growing their non-aligned businesses which and only not provides new revenue streams. So I will continue with environmental analysis. For external environmental, first is in economic. AirAsia is leading to success with the business partners like the Air, Thai AirAsia and Indonesia AirAsia and significant economic growth and development. 
the market sector is there with an encodable or undeserved needs. Furthermore, in Asia is also grow the low-cost aviation markets, expand and provide the company with the new investment people. Uh, next is socio-cultural. The low-income people who demand cheap air, tra cheap air transport service help in Asia expand expense by delivering its business with a ready market almost 500 million people and it allowed the organization to fully comprehend the social cultural needs of the target market by providing customer friendly service. Uh, lastly is technological. They are available of relevant technology like computer reservation system, CRS, and yield management system, YMS. Besides, AAG also avail available of interactive media social like Facebook and the internet allows AAG. And next is environmental trends. They are using five forces model of competition by Porter. First is supplier bargaining power. It helps the company manage capital and make financial management decisions. Example of Airbus and Boeing that the most essential aeroplane structures. Secondly, buyer bargaining power. People from all walks of life can now afford to fly with more options on the international market and lower air ticket price. Besides, people lifestyle and financial situation improve as a result of increased globalization. Thirdly is new entrants. Customer loyalty is lacking in the online industry. In light of this, Asia customer loyalty has dwindled due to increased competition from airlines like Jetstar and Tiger Airways. However, the high start-up cost required for airline service is a barrier to establish a new entrance in the airline industry. The main reason is that the number of type of competitors remain constant over time, reducing the chances of lower tier and line rising through the ranks. For example, Air Arabia offered to carry extra baggage for passengers, making it a better choice than Air Asia. So, I will present about competitive analysis. The large number of competitors providing airline service, there is fierce competition in the airline industry as demand for airline service grows. Besides, there is a competition between River for Road where their services are comparable to Air Asia with the Growing number of services offered by competitors, Air Asia has expanded its offering, including tower package and holder booking service, to help the company remain competitive. Jetstar Awareness, Tiger Awareness, JAL Express, and Air Arabia are among the existing low cost carriers that compete with Air Asia. The two closest competitors that consider against Air Asia is Jetstar Awareness and Malaysia Airlines. Jetstar Awareness is an Australian low-cost airline with its headquarters in Melbourne. Jetstar Awareness flights to over 80 destinations, meanwhile Air Asia has a 130 destination. So Air Asia flies to more destinations than its competitors in an increasingly competitive market. Malaysia Airlines also regarded as a competitor of Air Asia. Malaysia Airlines headquarters at Kuala Lumpur International Airport is a member of the One World Airline Alliance at the country flag carrier. It is uh, primarily of two subsidiary airline Mass Wing and Firefly. In comparison to Air Asia, Malaysia Airlines provide onboard food service to its customer at no additional cost, whereas Air Asia charges for it. According to the survey result, Air Asia has a 54 point intelligent waiting around. Rating while Malaysia Airlines has again 85 points, indicating as a uh, disparity between airline in terms of customer accepted and feedback. For the conclusions, Air Asia must be aware of and consider strategic management. Suggestions for Air Asia are the most of them check in a group with us, other people time learning up and waiting for them. First, they should provide convenience for adults with group to check in by spreading them to a dedicated counter, which all reduce the time learning up to wait for adults with group to check in. Second, Air Asia should warn consumers about flight delay because long flights are testing for passengers. 
Every airplane company in the world tries to implement strong strategy in order to compete with one another. As a result, Air Asia is constantly adjusting its business strategy in order to fulfill the requirement of its customer and maintain its leadership position. This corporate concept also acts in avoiding any commercial practice that are detrimental to the enterprise and it is not simple for other companies to keep up with Air Asia's success. Thanks all from our group and thank you.